Hello and welcome to Learn Data. It's great to have you on this channel. In this very first coding video in Scikit-Learn, we are going to begin with pre-processing. And this video specifically will look at standardization. And we'll try to answer these questions. What is standardization or mean removal or variance scaling? And why is it needed? And when would you use it? And some of implementations of that it is dot scale and dot standard scalar. So let's look at an example of a housing data. Here we have uh, on the right hand side, we have a price and number of rooms for a housing data. And we can see that the price is considerably larger magnitude than the number of rooms. If you look at the mean, we have 200,000 as mean for the price, whereas the mean for rooms is just two. So this can create problem when we are trying to work with machine learning estimators that rely on calculating the Euclidean distances. So what is done generally is to bring them in the same order of magnitude and standardization is one way. In, in this method, what uh, is done is, as you can see in the top right corner, the each value is subtracted from the mean. So that removes the mean and then we are scaling it by dividing by the standard deviation of each of those features. So uh, after calculations here, we can see that the price and the number of rooms, these are now after standardizing, they are in the same order of magnitude. It's around uh, 1.60069 and uh, 1.414. So it's uh, more, more or less the same. And what happens after standardization in the data set is the mean becomes zero because we subtracted the mean and then the standard deviation or variance is equal to one. So you see 0 0.0.9999. So I've put it one here. So that's really helpful because if you plot these features on the uh, plot as shown here, you can see that the y-axis is considerably larger. So when we are trying to calculate the Euclidean distance uh, using this formula, uh, let's say for the non-standardized version, we'll be, it will be two minus two square plus 150,000 minus 200,000 square, and then square root of that, we get around 50,000. So what that will do is it will put more emphasis on just the price and it will uh, put very less importance on the number of rooms. But in analysis, it presumably you would probably want both the features to be treated uh, with equal, should be given equal opportunity for both the features. So after standardizing, as we saw in the uh, table earlier, when we calculate the Euclidean distance, we get the value of around 1.5. So that's uh, in the similar magnitude range as both the features after they are standardized. So that's uh, very desirable. What can happen is, uh, let's say if we have, if we are trying to do k-means clustering and here we have four plots, in the top we have the train data and the bottom we have the test data. So the very first plot, this one, is just the raw values which are not standardized. So you can see that the y-axis goes from zero to 200,000. And uh, on, the, on the next plot, it's a standardized plot. So the values go only up to eight. Uh, and similarly on the plots below it, for the test data, the y-axis goes from zero to four, uh, 200,000 and the test data, it goes from zero to 10 uh, after standardization. And we can clearly see there are two clusters and k -min should be able to identify these two clusters. However, what happens is when the data is not standardized, as we can see in this plot, the yellow, uh, uh, yellow clusters, both the clusters are grouped as one and there are these outlier points that are grouped as a separate cluster. But after you standardize the data, before the training begins, then we can see that we clear we get a clear demarcation and we get nice two separated clusters both in the train set as well as in the test set so generally uh, if you have question when to use standardize uh, standardization uh, using uh, mean removal and 
scaling by variance or standard deviation the answer is that you want to whenever uh, the estimator is calculating distances or is based on distances such as k means then you definitely want to try to uh, use this approach it may not necessarily help but uh, it it could help uh, to a greater degree i mean i've used it uh, and wherever whenever there were situations where the scales were too off so there was a vast difference it definitely helped in, in uh, getting the analysis now let's get into jupyter notebook and start coding here i've imported a couple of libraries numpy pandas matplotlib dot pyplot uh, sklearn uh, we probably won't be using uh, pandas in this video but it's imported anyways uh, for from sklearn we are going to use pre-processing so we need to type this from sklearn import pre-processing uh, we probably do not need to import sklearn as like this i've done it here uh, just to see the version that i'm using so these are the versions i'm using for the libraries installed now for data we'll go ahead and create the same use the same data that we had up on the slide uh, for housing so we'll create uh, an array so x is equal to np dot array and here we'll use the housing prices first so we have 100,000 and then uh, 150,000 then we have 350,000 and finally we have 200,000 and after this the next item uh, we need to add is the number of rooms so 1, 2, 3 and 2 so that's our, our data set now for standard scalar we need to transform we need to uh, pivot this so i'm gonna use the transform here x dot t and that will put the uh, rows as columns as you can see here now what we can do is there are a couple of ways we can use a standard scalar the easy way if, is to use pre-processing dot scale so let's see x underscores uh, standardized standardized is equal to pre-processing dot scale so with pre-processing dot scale we can go ahead and uh, standardize the data set so in this case we are standardizing the array that we had and as you can see we get the same values that we had up in the uh, powerpoint slides so minus 1.069 so let's go ahead and look at that so as you can see here we have minus 1.069 minus 0 0.534 and minus 0 0.53 and 1.063 and similarly for the next column now we can go ahead and check that if it's manually uh, if it's correct so we can do a manual calculation so x underscore standardizer and this is the for manual calculation what we need to do is subtract remove the mean so basically we subtract the mean from this so x axis is equal to zero so we are subtracting the mean and then dividing it by the standard deviation or square root of variance so np dot standard deviation x and we again we are going to specify axis is equal to zero so now if you look at x underscore standard deviation and manual here we see that we get the same result that we had up above so this is the the standardized result now let's use the fit method so let's try fit what what fit, fit and transform does is it it we can fit the uh, standardized scale on a trained data set and then use it on a subsequent test data set as well so it's fit and transform and the generally the method that you want to follow in this case is if you have a data set you first want to go ahead and split it into your train validation and test set and then you want to apply the 
standardized uh, standardized scale are only on the trained data set and not on the validation and test data set so once you apply it on the trained data set then uh, you'll get a scalar that will be having the values for mean and variance derived from the trained data set and then you can use that to transform your validation and test data set and we'll go through that right now so let's go ahead and create a trained data set x train is equal to x so this is the same array that we had up above and now what we are going to do is apply fit fit method and save the results in scalar variable so scalar is equal to preprocessing dot standard scalar and dot fit and here we specify x underscore train now if we try to print what's inside scalar so if we print a scalar dot mean and print scalar dot variance here we see that uh, the train data set this data array was used to calculate the mean and variance now this will be used to standardize the data so for removing the mean by subtracting it from each of these individual values and then dividing by square root of variance so that is standard deviation so uh, let's see how that works to do that we simply need to type x i'll create another variable x underscore train underscore standardize is equal to scalar dot transform so we are using the transform method scalar dot trans transform and within parenthesis we need to specify x underscore train so now if you try to print out x underscore train underscore standardized we see that we get similar output as we have seen earlier now once we have this we can go ahead and check if uh, what we are trying to calculate is correct and for that let's go ahead and calculate the mean and standard deviation so if we print uh, let's say if we are printing the mean uh, it would be np dot mean and we have uh, for this one and again we can specify axis is equal to zero and run this so we can see that the mean is zero for both uh, both the columns and then we can go ahead and check the same for standard deviation and we can see that it the standard deviation is one so that's exactly what the standard scalar would do moving on now the beauty of the fit method is that we can use this scalar that we created above to apply it to the test method uh, test data set as well so let's go ahead and create a test data set and for that i'll create a variable x underscore test is equal to np dot array and again here we have housing prices so 110,000, and then let's create 130,000. And we have let's say 250,000 and 250 we need yep and then we have 290,000 and uh, according to the previous data we also need rooms so i'm going to add that say two one uh, three sorry two one three and three so that's our test data set that we need to standardize again uh, we can go ahead and transform it x underscore test dot t so we get columns of price and we get a column of the number of rooms now we can go simply go ahead and apply the transform method so x underscore test underscore standardize is equal to scalar dot transform and here we can specify x underscore test uh, so that's what we had above and this will give us the standardized uh, results for the uh, test data set sorry there should not be a s and this is the standardized data after the mean removal and uh, uh, division by normalizing by the standard deviation of square root of variance 
and we can check the mean and variance here or standard deviation so np dot mean x underscore test underscore standard deviation uh, again we need to specify the axis as equal to zero so axis is equal to zero we get uh, close to zero not exactly zero and np dot standard deviation again uh, for x underscore test underscore standard standardized axis is equal to zero and we get uh, close to one not exactly one because we are using the mean and variance for the train data set and not for test data set that was it for this video i hope in this video you learned what is standardization when to use standardization what are different ways you can standardize train and test data set how to use scalar how to use fit transform and also looked at uh, what could be the implications if the data is not standardized while using machine learning estimators that use uh, distances such as the k-means clustering in next video we'll continue this discussion and look at uh, some other ways we can trans transform the data like scale the data until then please like share and subscribe i hope to see you all in the next video thank you